what's new on the Burlington waterfront. Hey, now it's happening at the waterfront on Lake Champlain. Whatever the weather, there's so much to do on the new waterfront, the Burlington waterfront. Good afternoon and welcome to On the Waterfront. My name is Melinda Moulton and I am your host. Today I am so excited to have as my guest Elizabeth Frescoya. Elizabeth is the newly appointed Executive Director for the Governor's Institutes of Vermont. And this organization empowers Vermont high school students with intensive, hands-on learning experiences in topics ranging from engineering to global issues. So Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Um, you have a incredibly rich bio. Uh, <laughs> you, well, you do, and I've done some research on you. you um, you're a jazz mu musician. Um, you are a professional vocalist and trombonist. Uh, you have played and sang with artists like Adele and Michael Bolton an ice cube. Uh, you studied at Harvard uh, neuroscience and um, you also uh, worked uh, doing community building work with several New York City technology startup companies. Um, and, then, and then you've landed here. I'm sure there's more to your bio, which we're going to get into, but you're, you're, you're a native Vermonter, aren't you? That's right. Yeah, I grew up in Woodstock, Vermont and went to Woodstock schools and actually now I'm back there so it's really exciting to land back here with my family and um, have my kids uh, going through the same living the same place and getting to experience uh, that incredible sense of community that Vermont can bring. Was it was it this job that brought you to to up back to Vermont or had you been here? Uh, it's a mixture of a story like everyone I think everyone has a COVID uh, it's been a year story. Um, you know, thankfully, I can say that uh, we've been healthy, so I just am so grateful for that. Uh, but it has been a year of a lot of change. We've been in New York City for many years and thought we would be ending up back in Vermont. We were looking forward to that. Uh, my partner is also from Vermont, and we wanted to be here and, and raise our family here. And the opportunity sort of presented itself a little bit quicker thanks to COVID. And we came up last year, then the job at Governor's Institutes of Vermont um, came open. Kiyomi Taylor Mitchell um, has been running this organization for about 11 years and just done a fantastic job. And um, I'm very honored to have the baton passed from her. And just the timing worked out that we were here and I was available and, and so excited to take on this new challenge. So let's talk a little bit about your childhood. Um, I understand that your both your parents were mu musicians and you you were raised in a mu musical environment. Talk to me a little bit about growing up in Woodstock and what that was like and what inspired you to move in the directions that you did. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. I mean, what what is our origin, right? Where where are we bringing these inspirations? My dad is a professional musician. He's a bass player and a trombone player, so I get that very honestly. <laughs> um, my mother is. Uh, loves to sing uh, but isn't a professional singer but she uh, was always uh, a big supporter and and always had we always had music in the house and in the car and so i was listening to motown and i was listening to jazz and had all these incredible musical influences coming through you know from max roach to stevie wonder to Ella fitzgerald so all these sounds were in my brain and i grew up playing the piano and started to play the trombone and got involved with the uh, jazz band. And when I was in eighth grade, I guess I was 13 or so, uh, I was invited to participate with the high school jazz band, um, which was an honor. They needed an extra trombone player and invited me to be part of that. And as part of that, we went to the Berkeley College of Music High School Jazz Festival. And I remember it was February 22nd, 1992. And uh, we went to Boston and my mind just was blown that there were more students out there who loved jazz. And, and it just opened my mind that I could sort of think about that separately from my family, that that could be part of my identity as a person, not as just like I'm this musical family. Um, 
So as I went through high school, uh, I ended up getting aware, becoming aware of the Governor's Institutes of Vermont through a friend of a friend. And um, my mom said, do you think you should apply for this? <laughs> and I'm so glad that I did because um, my life really has changed. You know, and, and growing up in Woodstock was a very supportive place for the arts. Um, certainly there's access to art and Pentangle is a wonderful organization that's still thriving and brought a lot of artists into my school. So I was seeing it at home and I was also seeing some other, other ways to engage with the arts. And you had talent, obviously, you had talent. And so you, you, you left your hometown of, of Woodstock after high school. And is that when you went to Harvard and studied neuroscience? Talk a little bit about that, that you sure, took yeah. your trombone and your jazz uh, compositions and your fabulous voice and you went to Harvard. <laughs> I studied yeah. neuroscience. Wow. I was very sparkly dress and I went to Harvard. And um, I, you know, that was a shock um, in a way because coming from a small town and, um, you know, as you can imagine, to get into Harvard, you have to be a pretty good student. So I was a good student at Woodstock and I got into there and, and there was just a different kind of pool of people who were also the best students, you know, or in that and that uh, had had that experience of being sort of, you know, top of the class or whatnot, and and having all those folks together, and you're saying, oh well, that's not my identity anymore. It's not my identity to be top of the class. And what is it? What is it that I want to do? What do I want to say and experience in my life? Um, so I also really loved science and math, um, and I should say that I went to the math institute at GIV when I was in high school too. So I, I was kind of had my mind open. I I thought I would be a marine biologist. Um, at that point, I was deciding between Berkeley College of Music, um, going to a, I think it's College of the Atlantic up in Maine, it's for marine biology, and Harvard. And I, my mentors basically said, yes, go to Harvard because you can have all these options. Um, and I'm so glad I did because I met incredible, wonderful folks. And I'm so curious about your experience working at Harvard um, back in the day with Dr. Watson, but we'll talk about that at some other time. So you were drawn to neuroscience because you were a science and math uh, student and you were top of your class. And uh, so, how, so you, how long did you study neuroscience at Harvard? Well, the whole time. And I, I focused on biology and then psychology kind of shifted between. There was a nice program called Cognitive Neuroscience that was allowed, it was called Mind, Brain and Behavior. And you could come at it from a psychology perspective or a biology perspective, or even a history of science perspective. Um, and it was a wonderful program where you could really see the connections between disciplines. Um, so I, I worked in a lab um, studying tamarind monkeys, little one pound cotton top tamarinds, and they um, made choices and we observed them making choices. And um, you know, I, I wasn't the leader in these experiments, but as an undergrad, I was helping these graduate students um, answer questions about like, what is food? What, how does a cotton top tamarind know what food is? Or how do they develop an understanding of parsing a, the language in a, in a sentence? So it was a fascinating time. And I was doing that alongside doing the jazz band at Harvard and starting to play music out in the community in Boston and um, basically having a wonderful um, burgeoning adult life. <laughs> a wonderful life. A wonderful yeah. life. Um, I just started reading the book, The Genius of Dogs. Oh, I haven't read it. Well, I'm halfway through it. But anyway, it's just, I mean, I, you know, studying the science of, of animals is so remarkable because it's so close to our own behavior and you realize how truly evolved and um, incredible they are. So after Harvard, um, you took your trombone and your beautiful voice and your jazz compositions and your neuroscience background and you went to New York City to live yeah. and, and you got a job working doing community um, organizing for for high-tech groups tell me tell me what is community organizing for um, first tech startups yeah I should I should rephrase it slightly it's really about building community within an organization or within a community uh, or a space um, for example, I worked with um, a company more recently, but named Rolly, and um, that that company makes musical instruments, hardware and software. And so, looking at how you connect the musical community 
with the technology community and you know sometimes those are separate but how, how do you find those places where they intersect and so i was very interested in partnerships with schools and colleges um, and how to get i mean this is a through line for me but you know how to get young people excited about not only oh that's cool technology but like what can it do what can it express because for me communication is part of that and i think that really comes back to growing up in vermont and knowing what it feels like to be part of a community with lots of different threads intersecting um, so i yeah moving to new york was a lot about music to be honest um, but i found this other wonderful way to serve and be part of communities that were doing exciting new fresh things and had brilliant minds and ideas kind of working at the forefront of of what was happening you know at the first dot com boom was a very exciting time and i kind of rode the tail end of that um, and new york of course is a vibrant place to be so a lot of different ideas mixing together so talk a little bit about um you you're you you are a professional vocalist and trombonist yeah. And that you have played with artists like Adele, Michael Bolton, and Ice Cube. So you have you are, you know, you're kind of a celebrity in your own right when it comes to your music. How exciting is that? Tell us a little bit about those experiences. It really has been an exciting uh, journey through music. And I guess I like to, you know, some fo folks, you know, younger folks will ask me, well, how, how did you get started? Or how did you, um, you know, what advice would you give me? And it really comes down to people because I love meeting new people and getting to experience new perspectives. So music was kind of my ticket to doing that. I love music. And one of the things I love about music is that communicative aspect. But then once you're doing that, then you get, you know, at a certain level, if you stick at it and you're working well with folks, you get invited to do things like go to Russia or go to South America and get to see these other cultures and be a cultural ambassador yourself while playing music and having fun um so yeah i mean i got the chance i i left those um early dot com jobs for grad school so i could really focus on my music and that just gave me the space to again like figure out what it was it that i wanted to express myself i started making my own records my own albums and forming my own bands and then those opportunities led to joining other folks bands. So I've always been a freelancer, primarily in the jazz arena and the pop music arena. So when I, um, when I got invited to be part of Michael Bolton's band, that was a huge thing. And I toured for about two years um, all over the world and got a taste of that professional music life. So it, it's been a really amazing experience. So as a member of his band, were you playing the trombone or were you, what, where were you a vocalist? Well, uh, both, both. I was, I was hired as a trombonist, but everyone sings backup and dances. In fact, I have to tell you, the first show I did, I had two hours of rehearsal that day. I flew to California, was desperately learning the music, you know, on the airplane and got there and had two hours of rehearsal for dance, the dance moves. You know, which is like everyone's doing the same dance moves together. You got to know what you're doing. And I just, I remember spending that show with my eyeballs so wide open, trying to make sure I'm paying attention to what everyone's doing. And it was on, you know, kind of on the, by the seat of my pants, but um, it went off fine and I didn't get fired. So I got to, you know, the opportunity to continue doing that. And I just, I learned so much from that band about what it means to be a professional you know because touring is not just about the music it's about showing up on time and working as a team and those are big lessons that you know i carry through to other parts of my life so would you be willing to share your website um right now to my viewers um to uh share so they could listen to your music and look at your website and see what you've done because i i looked at it and i love listening to your music so would you be willing to share oh, that with my viewers of course so my website is elizabethjazz.com. Um, elizabethjazz.com. Elizabethjazz.com. Yeah, and you can find my music in all the places that you might look for it, but that's a great spot to come and learn. And I love, I love sharing my music. Well, it's wonderful music. Um, are your parents excited about the direction you've, you went with the music? 
Yeah, they are. They, they love it. And I, in fact, I get to perform with my dad still. Um, so that is a wonderful thing. We play together. Um, so hopefully this summer when things are a little, a little more open, we'll be outside uh, at some local venues and performing again. Well, we have a fabulous black box theater at uh, Main Street Landing. So if ever you want to perform, when we open the, the theater, it's a beautiful venue for music. And we'd love That's to have you, your father come and have you, have, have you sing. Uh, you have a beautiful voice. Well, thank you uh, for sharing your story. It's, it's a wonderful story. Now we're going to move into your present day, where since January, you've been the executive director of the Governor's Institutes of Vermont. Now, I'm, I'm assuming some of our, our viewers uh, don't know what the Governor's Institutes of Vermont is. Um, and I want you to talk a little bit about uh, the history of the organization and how long it's been around, and a little bit about uh, about what it is and what it offers. Sure. Well, let me start with what it offers because I think that's a really exciting part. Um, so we we offer transformational experiences for high school students in Vermont. We're a program that you can spend a week or up to two weeks with a cohort of other young Vermonters the same age, your peers, and learn and take a deep dive into a topic like the arts, or engineering, as you mentioned earlier, mathematics, global issues, technology and design. We have eight programs this year, but it varies from year to year, and we're always looking for topics that are really interesting for our young folks. Um, and I think one of the hallmarks of this is that we want it to be student-centered, that the student takes ownership of their journey um, through their educational life and what that might look like beyond high school. That, you know, what do they want to do? What is it that they want to use their voice for? What kind of change do they want to make in the world? Um, that's something that's inspired me about your story, Melinda. You know, that you've um, thought about how you want to make that change and you've taken those opportunities. And we offer incredible sort of awareness that other opportunities are there. Just because you live in a small town in Vermont, um, you might not have a certain opportunity in your own high school, but we want to offer that to you. We want to let you learn how to carve stone. We want to let you um, access, you know, the labs at UVM. We want to give you those things and the tools and the mentors to get there. So going back to the history, um, we're, um, we were founded in 1982 as a collaboration between the Vermont Arts, Arts Council and the Commissioner of Education um, and a, a wonderful, talented group of folks, including Christine Graham and Ellen Lovell, um, kicked it off. And it has been um, a really incredible journey um, throughout that time. We're, we're part of a network of governors, schools around the country. Um, but I think that what Vermont's program is so unique because we are looking for students who don't necessarily have all of those accomplishments under their belts. It's not an auditioned program. It's not based on your GPA. It's saying, are you passionate about something? Are you motivated to learn? Do you want to spend some time with your peers glowing and um, kind of leveling up um, your knowledge and, and expanding your horizons? So that's been a really incredible I mean, I, I will just say it this way, like a gift to these students. And it's something that I'm so proud to be part of going forward. You know, we're, we're 38, 39 years old now and looking forward to the next chapter of that length, you know, and hopefully beyond because we know that this generation of, of young folks in Vermont is so talented and has so much to say and we want to help them do that. Governor Snelling, I believe, was the governor who... Yes. Started this. Um, so for my viewers out there, um, for, a, for a parent who said, well, how, how, do, how does my child get involved in this program? Sounds like it would be perfect for my child. How, how, how do we uh, get our child involved? Could you share a little bit about that with our viewers? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be glad to. Thank you. So we run, um, as I said, uh, summer programs in, in 2021, they're online, though they may have some hybrid in-person aspects as things open up. We are definitely keeping an eye on that. Um, no, in a normal year, they're residential on college campuses around the state. So the, a student really gets to experience having a roommate and eating in the dining hall and, and making choices about their time and, and getting ready to live that more independent life after high school. So to apply, um, it's a very simple application that talks about your passions. Um, you know, what is it that you're interested in? 
and you just go to giv.org to uh, fill out an application. If you happen to be seeing this program at a time when we're not accepting applications because it's out of the season, please just send us an email and we can keep you in the loop if you can sign up for our email list. So how many students are, are participating? It's a summer program. How many students participate and how many school campuses are involved? So we have over 500 students each summer participating with us. Um, and uh, we have up to nine college partners, college and university partners around the state um, from, uh, from our Vermont Stage College system. Um, you know, we use Castleton, Linden, sometimes we have used Johnson in the past, Vermont Technical College, UVM, Champlain College, Landmark College, I'm, oh, Norwich University. Um, I'm probably forgetting one or two, <laughs> um, but we, we have a lot of wonderful partners. And then of course we partner with our schools because high school students can actually earn college credit for two of our programs, for our environmental science program and for our entrepreneurship program, there's a possibility to earn college credit. But for any of our programs, there's the possibility to earn high school credit because we are considered an extended learning opportunity program um, for proficiency-based grading. So if your student is going through that and needing to show proficiency in something, GIV could be a wonderful hands-on way for them to do that. So, um, so what does a day look like um, for a student who in the summertime is attending the Governor's Institute? What would a day, what would a day look like for them? Because they're spending the night, they're, if, this is if it's on, on campus, it's a college experience. So they're spending the night, they're living there. Uh, so give me an idea of what, of what a day would look like for a student. Well, it's a very packed day, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, there, there's something going on from you know, morning till very late at night. Um, with all of our institutes and it's not that you can't take a break or rest we can in fact we really try to build in reflection time so that students can synthesize what they're taking in and of course you know work socially with each other and, and develop those quote-unquote soft skills you know those uh, you know how to how to be with other people um, that's a big part of what we do so it you know they'll go to a class um, they'll have a lunch break, they'll take a workshop, they'll go to another class, they'll do a hands-on activity, there might be a field trip, there might be a guest speaker or a performer. Um, all these things are going, going, going. There's some social time and games, um, sports even, you know, like we, we, we want to develop the whole person and it's a very full day. We run from one to two weeks depending on the program. Um, and then even for our online programs this summer, you know, you might be surprised how could you do a hands-on experiential learning program online? But we actually mail students a box. So you get this box in the mail and it's got all the things you need. You know, it might have um, connectors and wires to build a solar panel, or it might have the brushes and, and paint and, and um, canvas that you need to, to take your, your class at the Arts Institute. So we have these, these moments where um, there really is that give and take and mentorship um, for the students, even when it's in an online format. Well, I want to go. I want. I want, <laughs> I, I want to go to the Governor's Institute. I think you should have one for for um, for old adults. Now, to my viewers, this is so fascinating. I could talk to you all day. Um, for my viewers, there there is this is a nonprofit. Um, how are, how is the organization supported? Because I know that you do accept uh, donations for this program. Uh, so, anyone out there who is who's listening to this program who would like to make a donation. Uh, to the Governor's Institute, it's uh, giv.org, give.org, how appropriate. And you can go online, hit the donate button and make a, make a donation. No donation is too small. Um, is most of your money come from, where does most of the funding come from? Is it, and by the way, is this a free program or do the students, do the families have to pay for it? And what is the cost of that? So we, um, we do charge a tuition, but this summer for 2021, it's pay what you can. We have a suggested tuition amount, but families can, can pay any amount that works for them. Yeah, and in any year we have a sliding scale. Um, so we wanna make sure that this opportunity is affordable for any family, no matter what their financial situation is. Um, and so I just encourage anyone thinking about it and saying, oh, but does it cost money? Don't let that be a barrier because we have um, the support for you 
and we want you to be there. Um, we do take donations. So yeah, a portion of our funding comes from individual donations and it's so important and it's so key. And it's just a gift that you're giving to these students to be able to support that. And again, yes, like Linda said, no donation is too small. You know, like we want you to be involved. Um, we also have some grant funding. We have um, a wonderful relationship, long-time relationship with the state of Vermont and the Agency of Education who appropriates some money for us to do these programs and allows us to do those things like offering pay what you can. You know, that support allows us to have the flexibility to support students. Thank you, Elizabeth. Now, the other thing I wanted to ask before we close here, we have about three more minutes. Um, for the viewers out there who feel like they might have something to share with the, these students, these curious and, and uh, wonderful human beings who want to better their, their careers and their education, and they feel like they have something they want to share, how's the best way to do that if they have expertise and they want to share with the high school students what they have, what their knowledge is and their experience? What's the best way to go about that? Yeah, well, we love to hear from everyone. Um, you know, we really know that there are so many incredible folks out there in Vermont, um, and we may not know each other yet, but we'd love to meet you, and we'd love to see if there's a way for you to get involved. Um, so maybe as a guest speaker, or um, you have something to donate, or, you know, we, we'd love to chat. Um, so just going to giv.org and reaching out there through our contact form would be the best way. Um, and I did want to mention one other thing, Melinda, because I know you were a guest um, and, and you offered your time, and thank you for that, um, for our leadership program, mm -hmm. which is running through our academic year this year and, and showing our young folks what it means to step up and make a difference in your community. So thank you for that. Um, okay, Elizabeth, so I'm going to ask you, uh, I think the last thing that I want to talk about um, is uh, what's one thing that you would love to tell someone who, a student, a high school student who's thinking of applying, what would you want to tell them um, to inspire them uh, to apply to attend the Governor's Institutes? Well, you know, we, we did a study um, a few years back about our alumni. Our alumni are now up to about 55 years old. And they look back up to 30 years later and say that GIV was one of the most important things that they did when they were in high school. And so I just would encourage you not to miss that opportunity. Take that opportunity. It's affordable. It's fun. And we'd love to have you. Thank you. That's beautiful. Um, so I want to thank you for, uh, for all that you've done and all that you're doing to inspire our young people. And I want you to, uh, I, 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 wanna, I, want, I want you to keep going with your music. Uh, you're incredibly talented. I want to see you around town at the clubs. And, um, I, and, I, and I encourage anyone who is interested in the Governor's Institutes of Vermont to visit their website. It's giv.org and get involved. You can either um, nominate or have your high school student um, go online and fill out an application. Uh, and you can also make a donation if you want to support this work of supporting our young high school students in Vermont who want to, who want to really pursue their careers and learn more about other careers. Because I know that you can learn about so many things through the Institute, right? Like you did. I mean, who would have thought neuroscience would have been where you would go at Harvard? And yet you did. And, and I'm assuming that you were a student at, at this Institute, correct? Yeah, I was a student at the Arts Institute right. as, as a 15 year old. Right. So, so, so who knows? I mean, a, a high school student could be moving in a direction and, and go to the Institute and say, you know what, I think neuroscience might be, might be my thing. And um, so, uh, and then the other way is for if somebody out there, one of our viewers has a, has a, has a career that they want to share something expertise to reach out to the, to the Governor's Institute. Do you have a staff? I wanted to ask you, do you have a staff of, of folks? We do. We have a small staff, wonderful folks, and we're based in Winooski. So I'm, I'm in Woodstock, but the staff is based in Winooski, and um, you know we're so glad to be in that area, which is such a good thing. Well, Elizabeth Frescoy, I am telling you that I am blown away by you. Um, I was when I listened to David Goodman's interview of you and couldn't wait to talk to you and see you in person. And uh, I hope to see you again, my friend. Thank you for your time. And to my viewers out there, um, uh, thank you for bearing with us on Zoom. I want you all to stay well, stay happy, look at the sun is shining, spring is here in Vermont, and everyone get out there and get vaccinated, okay? 
Um, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you.